Salut, mesdames et messieurs, et bienvenue à Wii The Revolution, a narrative video game which casts you at, in the role of a judge on the Revolutionary Tribunal during the French Revolution. Now, we are about to write history, ladies and gentlemen, because we have before us in our courtroom today citizen Louis Capet, or, as he's otherwise known, Louis the Sixteenth. King of France. Now, this is going to be a bit ch more challenging than our other cases, I think. Uh, look, our mentor Raymond does not look to be particularly happy about it. Um, we have the, pe the people who want uh, Louis's head. So does the committee. Our family just want him imprisoned, and no one wants him acquitted. And we now also have, apparently, a, a mob attitude outside of the courtroom. <laughs> Which is going to be interesting, I think. Um, how that affects uh, things and the questions we ask. Uh, let's consult our notebook, see if we have anything new pop up. We have a bad relationship with our father, yeah. Something has gone wrong, very wrong. You must realize that. Yeah. I mean, we realize it. Saint Just is lying. During one of the regular disputes at the Café Procop, the brazen Saint Just demagogically suggested that all judges are corrupt relics of the ancient regime. Unfortunately, he chose to use you as an example. Again. Uh, we have a message from Frederic. Uh, I mean, come on, Frederic. You can can't put that on us. Oh, that's sad. Poor Matilde. We'll... We have a lot to sort of try and repair with our family, both our father and our wife. And our oldest son. So there are definitely some challenges there, but... I mean, our reputation is fairly high. We were fairly popular with the people and with the committee. Um, let's see what's new personalities. Yeah, Burel was executed. Sentenced to the guillotine. All right, let's have a look at the case file. Speech for the pro prosecution by Anton Quintin. Compatriots, Citizen Capet, previously known as King Louis XVI of France, must be punished for conspiring against the people of France. Louis Capet tried to defend his absolute authority by plotting against the National Constituent Assembly and the people of France. We all remember July of 1789, he gathered an army, 15 foreign regiments, and ordered them to surround Paris. Soldiers, led by Baron de Besenval, were to capture deputies and shoot at citizens defending the, the reforms, and so they did. The Royal German Regiment drew first blood. After the plot failed, Louis Capet tried to flee the country with his family and scheme with foreign monarchs abroad. Is that not the reason he took flight from the Tuileries? One night in June of 1791, using someone else's passport? Was he not heading to Montmédy, where his loyal armies were stationed, ready to take him to Austria? If it were not for Postmaster Touré, this scheme could have ended tragically for us. Louis Capet will never abandon the thought of suppressing the revolution by force. Before the events of 1792, he gave orders for the Swiss Guard stationed in the Tuileries to be doubled. He conducted a public muster in front of horrified citizens. The people had no choice. They had to act before Capet attacked. Citizens of Paris who tried to stop the madness were shot at, even after Capet's escape to the National Assembly. Evidence. An order issued by Marshal de Broly to Baron de Besenval. Okay, he's charged with counter-revolution, treason, fraud, mon adv advocating monarchy, and neglect of duty. Let's see. Um, he's 
definitely accused of trying to shoot civilians and of trying to suppress the revolution. The way is the witness. There are no traps though, but we only have two possible mistakes we can make. to unlock all the questions though, thankfully. Still. <laughs> that was a close call. That was definitely trickier than it's been so far. Well, let's uh, see about starting our interrogation then. Louis Capet, I hereby open your trial. Answer the questions when asked. Capri is one of the na is the name of one of my ancestors. My name is Louis Auguste de Bourbon. That may have been your name before you raised your hand against the people you had sworn to defend. As a king, I have never done a thing against my people. I love them, and I still do. Objection! There is evidence of Louis Capet's treason against the people of France. He should be tried as a foreigner and enemy, not as a citizen of the Republic. Questioning the defendant will stir the impatient audience. Once anchored, the people may even start a riot. Okay. Yeah, let's start. Um No, I'm not gonna start with Sean Delay, I don't think I'm gonna... Yeah, start if he's ever to try, try to abolish the assembly. Did the accused strive to abolish the National Constituent Assembly? I would not convoke the Estate General, the Estate General for the first time in generations and then acknowledge the National Assembly to act against it and all the required reforms. Then why would you call in armed forces after the National Assembly's transformation into the National Constituent Assembly? My minister has pressed me to ensure my people's safety. That is a bold statement, considering how many of your people were killed during the unrest in July. That pains me greatly, but the only person responsible for that is Baron de Bissonval. Objection! But the Bissonville carried out Capi's orders. Calling in a witness. Call in the witness, Jean Duré. Please introduce yourself. Jean Duré, Postmaster Saint Menou, Monsieur le Juge. Did the accused, Louis Capet, introduce himself to the witness with his full name? No, he didn't introduce himself at all. He only produced someone else's documents. So he tried to hide his identity. You could say so, I used the name from the documents after he showed them to me. He never objected. How did you learn of his true identity? By the image on the paper as our nation. Then a messenger from General Lafayette confirmed my suspicions. 
I ran as fast as I could to Varennes to inform the authorities. Did the accused tell anyone the destination of his journey? He asked for the way to Montmédy. I told him to go through Varennes and... Varennes en... Varennes en Argon... Argon... Varennes en Argon... And warned the coachman to be careful. The road is difficult there. Would the accused like to comment on this testimony? It confirms that I had no intention of escaping. I was merely traveling. It is the right of any free citizen. What did the accused plan to do with the constituents' deputies? Nothing. The assembly that I joined on 27th June 1789 granted immunity to its members, and I intended to respect that. And yet, you ordered your soldiers to seize and imprison the deputies, and perhaps even execute them. Nonsense. There is no evidence of that. My enemies spread rumors to get rid of me. We don't need evidence against a coward who runs from his own people. Has the accused ever considered Paris and its citizens to be his enemies? Absolutely not. I ask that you explain the question. How can you deny it if you do not understand the question? Your army surrounded Paris. Is that not what you do to your enemies? My soldiers were there only to ensure public order while the National Assembly was in session. Adequate forces were already in present in Paris. Was that not enough? Who was responsible for the delivery of the passport of the man called Pinet? My butler. I ordered him to prepare all the formalities regarding travel to Montmédy. The city hall has not received any submissions from your butler. I do not know what to say. Monsieur le juge, Louis Capet's butler was seen at the, at the Austrian embassy. They surely took care of all the documents for the defectors. Monsieur Tanvi, that is mere hearsay. Who said such a thing? Bring him here so that he may repeat it. There is no need. That is hard evidence. Especially in light of what the accused has already told us. Yeah, that doesn't look well for you, Louis. Who helped you suppress the revolution? Frederick William II? Francis II? Catherine II? Or maybe your relative, Charles IV? Justice awaits them as well. Nonsense. All of it. My only desire is to take, to take my family out of Paris. As I did not wish for them to suffer house arrest. We all know that European monarchs despise our ideals of freedom, equality and brotherhood. Am I to understand that you tried to prepare a joint military intervention? I, do, I deny any such accusation. There is no evidence for such an outrageous claim. I would never turn against my beloved France. Liar! He tell his own mother, never mind his country. Why are we a bad judge? Ah, okay, because the trial's gone on for too long. Well, I mean, we'd better pass down a verdict, then. Monsieur le juge, the crowd in front of the building is enraged. There may soon be a massacre. A rumor has spread about hidden evidence of citizen Capet's treason. People have gone mad. What evidence? I will go to them. I would ask you all to stay in your seats until I return.
That time was People, pretty tight. People, what vexes you? Why are you so angry? The king lied to us! That coward ran for us! He'll surely run from justice as well! We found proof of the king's treachery in his secret iron cabinet! Withdrawn, withdrawn. Um. Yeah, that looks good. Louis Capet is just flesh and blood. A citizen, just like you. He cannot escape the long arm of the law. We won't turn a blind eye to new evidence. We shall dutifully pursue each line of inquiry for the Republic and only for the Republic. I will not let you down. If the blood of traitors needs to be spilled, then it will be spilled. I shall see to it personally. Okay. Man, they they took some talking to. <laughs> it is true. Evidence of Capet's guilt has been found. Really? Would the defendant like to explain why he concealed the secure iron cabinet and the documents hidden within from the convention? I hid nothing from the convention. No one asked me about the existence of such things. You kept your correspondence well hidden under lock and key. It could only be retrieved. It could only be retrieved. Only... Uh, yeah, that's... It could only be retrieved with the assistance of a master locksmith. Any affluent Parisian has a lockable cabinet. I, for one, am keenly interested in locksmithing. Yeah, that, um... The deputies of the so-called convention are to be carefully questioned, and if any of them should display common sense and cease to report, support the assembly, reward him with an extraordinarily high allowance, and forward his majesty's thanks. We trust that with God's grace and help, His Majesty will soon arrive within the Imperial borders for us to grant His Majesty, as well as our beloved sister, safety, and to potentially take the steps necessary to re-establish the natural European order within the borders of France. His Imperial Majesty, the Holy, Holy Roman, Roman Empire, Prior, Emperor, King of Hungary, Bohemia, Croatia, Dalmatia, Slavonia, Galicia, Lodomeria, etc., Leopold II, Habsburg. 1791, 15th of May. Your Grace, soon we will overcome, soon we will come to Your Majesty's rescue. However, for the time being, I implore Your Majesty to muster local troops that remain loyal. I shall issue a warning to Your Majesty's subjects that any and all who dare to raise a hand against Your Majesty would suffer the direst of consequences. My armies await my orders to curb the tide of anarchy in Your Majesty's country. Duke of Brun Brunswick, Lüneburg. Charles, Charles William Ferdinand. AD 1792, 9th of June. Yeah, that does not look good.
That was at least flawless. You were aware of the plans of the Emperor and the Duke of Brunswick. Why did you not warn the National Assembly and the army? You need to speak up. I did not deem their threats serious. That reeks of treason. Allow me to quote. My armies await my orders. Does that not sound like a serious threat? Prince Charles is impetuous, but I never thought he once thought he would dare attack France. Did the accused intend to lead the Emperor's forces to France? To France? I certainly did not. In his letter, the Emperor was quite clear about his intentions to return order to France. I do not know the plans of Emperor Leopold, but I do know that I would never allow anyone to spill French blood. But you must admit that such an offer from an, an enemy government paint, paints you in a bad light. Dear God, it is merely personal correspondence from my brother-in-law. It is not personal when the letters exchanged are by rulers and deal in matters of national security. Yeah. I think we need to hand down the verdict. I don't think there's any way around it. No, he did not. Yes, it was. I think it was Roland. I sentence citizen Capet to death by guillotine. Take the convict away. Long live the people! Down with the tyrant! Gain more reputation, more influence. Also gain more reputation for unlocking all the questions. Oh, our family uh, went to <laughs> wanting the death penalty as well. So everyone wanted the death penalty for poor Louis. <sighs> I am sorry, mon roi. But there was no other way. You must die so that the country may live, as citizen Robespierre, de Robespierre says. There is going to both be fallout from this. Do they understand? Their excitement was stronger than the smell of the fresh wood the guillotine was made from. Do they know what's about to happen? Sheep that only now realize they used to have fangs and claws. One thought guides their clenched fists. To bow before the new, uncompromising idol with his shining steel crown. I too have felt their eyes on me, just like him. A silent assistant in this ritual of new faith. A random acolyte, scared, doubtful. Will not the old gods seek vengeance for this treachery? He abandoned them all too easily. I was unable to understand their screams. I only tasted the stench of their sweaty bodies. 
but I could hear one thing perfectly. Bring us the king. Maybe I could win the hearts of the crowd. Well, we failed at that earlier, but maybe. So it seems humility would be a good response to oversensitive, right? Seems like a good approach. There are no shades of grey to crime, only guilt or innocence. By passing this sentence, we are making our streets safer. I am not mourning the one being guillotined, but us, his victims. Only death awaits the enemies of France. Okay, was a pretty decent buff. I die as an innocent man. I forgive my enemies. Pull the rope! For the revolution! And so the king is dead. I must be dreaming. Is that the map from Mulia's case? You stole evidence from the court? I did not steal it. Only found the use for it. It will be more useful in your room than in the dusty drawers of the court archives. After all, this is a map by Diogo and should be treated with respect. What a lovely explanation. Consider it a gift. Now, take it and try not to talk so much. You should be more concerned about the events with the king because this whole situation just seems peculiar. As your superior, I should be the one judging Louis' case. I fail to understand why Robespierre asked for your assistance. You are jealous? Of course I am jealous. It is an important mo moment in history, and people will be reading about it for decades to come. It seems there will be trouble. I have a feeling that someone is toying with my life, as though an unknown force were pushing me into utter chaos. Keep your eyes open. You came to the political world of the city from out of nowhere. And that means someone will have to step down to make room. Do you have to sound so defeated? My husband is a renowned person now. We should be happy about it. It is easier to shoot someone in the spotlight. Okay, that our father hates political debate. I mean, we probably should try and repair our relationship with him, but... Okay, our wife will hate. I mean, we can't really do anything to improve our relationship with our wife at the moment. I'm not sure why our wife hates the fact that we spend time with our children. Yeah, I mean, there's no, none of these addresses my wife at all, unfortunately.
The people shrug the invisible burden of their backs. The streets seem more peaceful. Even the windows at the courthouse were soon replaced. Dear citizen Fidel, I am writing to congratulate you on becoming part of our country's history. Citizen Capet's trial is on everyone's lips. I would also like to discuss the important topic of appointing the new commander-in-chief of the National Guard who will replace Citizen Burel. It is my honest belief that I am the best candidate. Should you give me your permission, I would like to pay you a visit this evening. Long live the Republic. François Henri. Let's see. White lies. Your father defended the tribunal's honor during a debate at the Café Procop. Praising its virtues and achievements, people even believed him. Yeah, that was pretty kind of him. and family. Oh, we have a new entry on Bruno, your older brother. He is absent, yet the very mention of his name shakes the walls of your house. He was the firstborn, your father's pride and joy. He was chosen to inherit your father's business and use it as the foundation on which to expand your family's affluence. His crime changed everything, casting shame upon the family name. A few years after your father cast him out of your home, you received word that Bruno was killed on the battlefield, his body rotting with the thousands of others who died fighting for the Republic's freedom. Regular soldiers shun him due to his port portliness. They were the main reason that he became a court guard. He may not be the brightest, but he's loyal and follows orders without as much as a word. Raphael Clovy. Danton. An attorney himself, he knows the law as well as the tribunal's judges. This fact is considered by many to be the only thing keeping him alive in light of the numerous accusations of corruption and treason against him. Even more impor important, however, is his ability to deliver fiery speeches that result in the dismissal of all potential charges. I think we've read that before, yeah. Jean-Marie Roulin. Uh, yeah. And Grace Elliot, we've covered those. Okay, so we now run on timers before people start rioting. So we can't just run through every question, I assume. Let's see the case file. Uh, he is charged with burglary, assault, theft, and destruction of property. Before the court stands Claude Garnier, a resident of Paris and a baker's apprentice arrested for robbery. He led a group of people who broke into the house of citizen Dominique Fournier, a wealthy man. According to Fournier's testimony, the robbers insulted him and then began beating him. At the same time, Claude Garnier told his accomplices which extensive, which ex expensive rather, belongings should be taken and the group left the bad at Fournier lying on the floor. Many witnesses saw the whole incident. Fournier's servant saw present... was present, I would assume it should be, during the events, while some passers-by looked through the windows. Gagné not only admitted to leading the group, but he actually boasted about it, calling it a revolutionary deed of which he was proud. He supposedly found out that Fournier is funding counter-revolutionary leaflets and decided to relieve him of his funds. The accused would not reveal the source of that information. He handed the guards a lampoon of Robespierre, claiming that he had found a too thick pile of them in the victim's house. Gagné claimed to have burned all but one, which he kept as evidence. 
When the guards arrested him, they noticed a gold signet ring on his finger that belonged to citizen Fournier. Gagné often takes a stand during the gatherings of the Enrochers, demanding that all wealthy people be hanged. In the year 1789, he took part in the storming of the Bastille. Dominique Fournier is a financier. It is well known. It is a well-known fact that he was a strong supporter of finance, finance minister Necker right to the end of his career. We have established and confirmed with, with many people that he followed the Girondins, although he has not taken an active role in public life in recent years. It is also a fact that after the robbery, Fournier's house was thoroughly searched and no counter-revolutionary materials were found there. Okay. So the people want him released. The committee wants him in imprisoned. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm leaning towards imprisonment. Just going off the case file. So let's see, we have one trap and we are allowed to make three mistakes. Okay. As far as I can tell, freeing the Bastille prisoners is the trap. No, that was the trap. Okay. Whoops. Okay, let's start the interrogation then. We need more people like Gagné. Please introduce yourself. My name is Claude Gagné. You are accused of breaking into the house of citizen F Fournier, whom you then brutally assaulted and robbed. I led an investigation of his house. Vive la Révolution! Good. Who gave you the right to represent the Révolution? The people of Paris. Sure we did. Uh, yeah, that's pretty messy. Citizen Fournier was se severely beaten. He could have avoided it. Yes, I punched him once or twice, but only because he kept squealing like a pig. Are you proud of yourself? He got what he deserved. Royalists are animals! He kept squealing when you were turning his place over. He was plotting against decent Parisians. Isn't that enough? We'll kill that hog! Yeah, this is pretty much the worst aspects of, <laughs> of mob rule. Um, call in the witness, the victim's servant. Call in the witness, the victim's servant, Gaetan Calvé. Do you work for the victim? Yes, Monsieur de Juge, that's right. Did you see the attack? I saw everything. They beat him. 
hitting and kicking. May I finish the sentence? Then one of them wanted to hit him with a wooden bath. I started screaming, and you know what that fuck th th did? He started laughing. He found it awfully funny. Did you see the defendant among the assailants? He conducted them like an orchestra. First the strings, snip, then the percussion, bam. Enough with the metaphor. You were found with a gold signet, citizen. I have reason to believe that it belonged to the victim. Am I right? What do you keep calling him a victim? He's a rich traitor. The true victims are the people of France. You know what we are talking about, and we will take care of him in due course. Now, what about that signet? Ah, the signet. Nice, isn't it? Those swines got fat off our hard work. And then they refused to give us a tiny part of their wealth. Not even the tiniest. Huzzah! What did you plan to do with it? Nothing. It looked nice on my finger. Much better than on that pig. The signet was not the only thing you took, was it? I heard the house was stripped of everything precious. I was especially fond of those gold-plated candlesticks. Yeah, I mean, I think we've heard enough to... Form a verdict. We don't want to go into the next tier, I don't think. It's gonna make us significantly less popular with the people. I mean, we are getting some pretty significant minuses from our ma popularity, unfortunately. Confessed the crime. Well, yes, he did. Okay, we can answer all of those, so I see no reason why we can't just convict him now. I sentence citizen Claude Garnier to prison. Lead the condemned out. What? Yeah, I think that takes care of that pretty well. Mob rule is not quite what we're looking for. Hopefully the committee's happy with that. Seems like they are. So let's move on. Your wife told me that if I seek the support of just people, I should look for them in your house. Yes, citizen, citoyen Henriot. My husband will be more than happy to endorse your candidacy for the off post of Commander in Chief. Why does this feel like a fait accompli? Please do not be angry with your wife. I am sure she, that she acted in good faith when she made those promises. How could anyone refuse to support such a respectable officer? I am certain that my husband will acknowledge your merits, just as I have. Undoubtedly. But how can I be so sure when there are so many other candidates? Well, I respect the other candidates. They are decent people. However, I can offer you the most precious gift. Loyalty. Working together, we can greatly benefit each other, and maybe Paris too. 
Our family has a high regard for sincerity and loyalty, does it not, my dear? Moreover, we respect each other's boundaries at every turn. Yes, those ugly rumours about you being an addict should be put to an end. Nor that I never forget those who have done me a favour. Words, 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 citizen Henriot. I am aware that no other candidate has asked for your endorsement. They do not think that you are worthy of their friendship, but I, François Henriot, am different. And so are my words. I am sure that my husband has already noticed that. Thank you. Regardless of what the masses are yelling, Paris is, on, Paris is only as strong as its united elites. I will not retract my wife's promises, but in the future, make sure you come to me first. But of course. And we may have to do that, yeah. Just to repair our relationship. Decapitation still had not lost its charm since the beginning of the revolution. A group of people were gathered in a Parisian street surrounding something on the floor. Your prestigious position allowed you to make your way to the centre of the mob, only to find a man's severed head. What had caught everyone's attention was the head's facial expression. It was grinning. It was so unusual that the crowd stared, hypnotised for no apparent reason. You wonder if anyone had thought to ask about the rest of the corpse. A lone severed head should definitely cause curiosity. Even if for purely scientific reasons, and now you are staring alongside everyone else. I don't really see a reason to get rid of it. Let the mob have their fun, as it were. I don't know how long they continued staring at the head, or how long it was smiling. Yeah, it's pretty creepy. A Paris of a New Era Weak, vulnerable to attacks. Waiting for someone to reach for power. Waiting for someone who, once again, will take control of its soul. The pawns are now in play. Okay, revolutionary holiday. Recent days have proven that Paris can win, that France can win. We managed to overcome our past, divesting our last remaining tyrant of his power. Now it is time to rebuild, to create symbols that inspire your future generations. That is why, during a gathering of the convention, several enterprising citizens proposed the construction of a statue co to commemorate the revolutionary victory over injustice. You were given the honor of supervising the construction. There is no better candidate than the one who vanquished Louis Capet. You have an opportunity to leave yet another mark on Paris. Sections of Paris. Each section can be controlled by you, by an enemy, or be neutral. Each section you take over provides you with additional influence points. With one additional influence point. The chance of mis mission success is higher in your territory. Enemy agents can also take over your sections. Actions performed in enemy sections are less likely to be successful. Locked sections. Some sections are locked. Unlock them with any agent to carry out actions within them. Unlock a section. To unlock a section, you have to scout it first. You can only unlock sections adjacent to the ones that are already unlocked. Each section reacts to the d situation in the game, causing the fervor of its, of its citizens to rise or fall. 
If their fervor, fervor becomes too intense, it could result in destructive riots. Send agents on missions, manage unruly crowds, and fight for influence over the city. C click an agent and choose the action you wish them to, wish them to carry out. The bruiser is good at fighting, gaining reputation, and managing crowds. Diplomat. Takes over sections, nurtures relations with factions, and lowers fervor in sections, weaker in jewels against enemy agents. You can move your agents freely between your sections. Ultimate, unfortunately, in hostile and neutral sections, you can only move one space per day. Oh, to sign of the statue. Oh, that's pretty cool. Liberté. Oh, right, I need to stamp it. Okay. That's going to cost me two influence points. I can spare that for now. Hideout will help your agents operate more efficiently in Paris. Action granted by this building will facilitate your work at the court. Certainly interesting. A bloody beginning. A violent prologue announced by a flowing red curtain. The wrath of strangers made me sick to my stomach. Feet stirred dark puddles. The air tasted like iron. Their heads, someone cried. Anger hidden in the shadows. Thousands of cries from a single throat. Here was a beast with hundreds of claws and teeth. A kicked, abused, and physically wounded soul. Their heads! What a cold and urgent order. The beast's eyes showed a long disguised bitterness, yesterday's envy. It has waited too long to show mercy now. Too long covering its ears while others laughed at its inadequacies and feebleness. 
The beast's bark was filled with a thousand smiles of those who worship this bloody morning. The day when their enemies will perish. Their brothers. Well, that's Miss Elliot. I knew she would, I think. I knew she would come before the court at some point. Well, uh, I'm gonna call it a day here for now. I hope you enjoyed that episode and how we got to write history, send King Louis off to the guillotine. Uh, I certainly did. <laughs> uh, though not quite meant in that way, but, but yeah. I have to... I have to admit, I'm still really, really enjoying this game. I think it's a really well made. Its concept is really well executed. Um, and I would definitely recommend that you take a look at it yourself if you enjoy what you see so far. Uh, I hope you'll join me for the next episode where we'll take a look at Miss Elliot and what the charges she's facing. What, what the charges are that she's facing. Um, yeah, and uh, until then, thanks a lot for watching, and uh, please, take care. Bye-bye.